Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to go over the Solo Flawless Presage with you. Uh, just showing you some of the tips and tricks that I'd recommend, but also recommendations on how to do it and the best way to achieve getting Solo Flawless. So admittedly it did take quite a few attempts to get this right. Uh, I had some issues along the way, uh, but I'd also really like to get a better understanding behind what sort of issues that you might have experienced. So if you want to put those down in the comments below, I can see if there's any feedback which I can provide that might help you moving forwards. So with this quest, what I would suggest that you do is take weapons that will allow you to play the long game and also play from a distance. So what I ran with this particular quest was the Raid Sniper Rifle, the Ikelos SMG uh, because of War Mine Cells, and then also a Xenophage. So the reason why I ran Xenophage and the Ikelos SMG is very simply because most of the enemies in this particular activity have solar and arc shields. You will tend to find that there are not that many void shields, so I would prioritize arc and solo when picking your loadout. So this is the first room that you're going to experience enemies. These are screebs and uh, they do explode. So I would suggest keeping a distance from them and uh, just taking them out as quickly as possible. And then this will allow you to get to the switch at the end of the corridor. And then you can then proceed to the next area. So when you come through to the next area, you're going to drop down and some more screeps are going to appear. You just need to take those out as quickly as possible and then you'll find that when you jump up to the next level, there will be a further two more that you need to kill. So just worth keeping that in mind as it did take me by surprise when I first started the encounter. And also it's worth mentioning that these can pretty much one hit you, so it's a big red flag. Moving on, there's a fuse over here that you just need to shoot and then this will open the hatch which will allow you down into the next area where you're going to be greeted by a lot more screeps. Now it is worth mentioning that you can hang back at this area and the screeps will not enter that area. So if you want to play safe, you can actually stand back and shoot and just move forwards a little bit just so that you can gain their aggro and then move back again just so that you can then remain safe. So this is the next switch that you need to activate. Once you have done this, there will be a door at the end on the higher level as well, and you can run through there to activate the other switch across the uh, jumping area. And then to open the door that allows you down into the trash compactor, then all you need to do is just jump across again and go down to the lower level just underneath where that door is and there will be a fuse that you need to, sw to hit and this will allow you access to the trash compactor area. When you go down this chute just be careful because if you don't jump more towards the end it will kill you on impact and this pretty much happens 100% of the time, so it will completely ruin your solo flawless if you don't jump. So with the trash compactor, obviously the walls are closing in, you've got a very limited amount of time and you've got enemies that are coming at you. The easiest way to do this is very simply kill the screebs as quickly as possible and then once you've done that, 
start shooting the panels on the floor just to identify where they are. The best way to do this in my opinion is jump in the air because you'll be able to see the panels that you need to locate just because they'll be highlighted in blue with the fuse color and then also prioritize from the outside in because once the walls close over those then you can't shoot them again so it's really going to come down to just making sure that you prioritize the right ones at the right time. If you aren't able to get it straight away then what I would suggest is going down to the very end of the corridor just opposite where the switch would be and then you can basically survive because this is a cheese area and uh, it won't kill you so it allows you a lot more time to do what you need to do on the next run when you actually know where the switches are and then you can get it done quite quickly and easily. So with this area, what I would suggest that you do is stay more towards the back of the room. You're going to find that there's going to be a lot of close combat enemies coming towards you. Um, once you've been able to kill them, then you're going to be pretty safe just because the snipers, if you hide behind things, aren't really going to do much to you. And then you can really focus on the ones with the shields and also with the snipers and um, just get them out of the way when you can. Uh, the snipers are probably the most dangerous just because they are quite accurate, especially with D2 at the moment because everything seems to have auto-aim. So I have to give it to Bungie, but this particular activity is giving me a lot of Dead Space vibes. So I just really wanted to get your opinion. Are you getting the same sort of vibes when you play the mission? Put in the comments below. I would personally say this room is probably one of the most difficult, uh, just because there's a lot of snipers and also there are some really overpowered enemies in here which are extremely difficult to kill. They also spawn a lot of screebs and also the captains and the snipers will make life difficult for you. However, the real danger are all of the little tiny ads that will come towards you um, and you really need to make sure that you clear these out as quickly as possible because they were responsible for pretty much all of the wipes that I've done when trying to do this. So prioritize them as quickly as possible and also then just take out the snipers and the captains as quickly as possible after. Probably worthwhile focusing on the abominations last just because they take the most time but also you need to you do need to pay attention to them and you can easily dodge their attacks. Also do not push forwards is my main advice because if those abominations do spawn at the wrong time, you're most likely going to die.
Cyber systems are intact. Why didn't they try to run? So when you flip this switch, it's going to open the door next to it and uh, you're going to get the spores. Then all you need to do is hit the spores, run across the room and this will allow you into the next area. However, do be warned that there are screebs that will jump down. So a well-placed grenade is good, uh, but also there is a place which you can jump and you can hide if necessary and the screebs can't get to you. So you can just take them out or just to recover and then reload your weapons and get back to killing them. So the next bit is just flipping the switch on the pillar and then this will open a door at the end where you can just use a sniper rifle to uh, break it and then you can then go up to the top but just make sure to be quick because there isn't a lot of time to actually get through it so being a bit preemptive will help you get through quite well and then just flip the two switches at the top and then this will open the door which will give you the spores which then you can carry on around the corner and get on to the next bit. So in this room I would recommend Prioritizing the Screebs because they are going to be the most dangerous to you. They're going to be the ones that will approach you and also blow up. So definitely worthwhile killing these quickly. Once all the enemies are dead, there is a switch that you need to pull um, and then this will open the door to a turret. I would advise using a sniper rifle uh, just from an angle because it has no chance of hitting you and it's pretty much not really a threat to be honest. Shoot the fuse here and this will open a door uh, on the upper level where you can shoot the spores and then make your way to the back of the room where you can fall down to the next bit, which I have to admit is pretty scary. And even though I've done it many times, it still is quite frightening. <laughs> so here, find the blue glowing door, which will indicate the spores, do a 180, and then deal with the enemies that are down the corridor. They can be a little bit sneaky, so it's definitely worthwhile hanging back as these can catch you by surprise and also did catch me by surprise in this part. What the hell? Where the hell do these come from? Seriously. So after that traumatic experience, turn around and shoot the spores, do a 180 and then take the first left and follow your way down the corridor and then at the end you turn it right 
and then you can go through the area and then pull the switch which will then take you through to a room which you've already visited but you just need to shoot the spores and then do another 180 and then you'll enter the next area where there'll be some more enemies. So in this area, prioritize the Screebs. They can follow you into the other room and they will blow you up. So make sure that you kill them in a timely manner because they are going to ruin your flawless. So this particular part, when I first did it, took me the longest to figure out because I didn't understand where things were. So pull the switch on the wall and then just behind you on the wall there's some pipes and uh, this will open up to a fuse which you can shoot and then that will open up the spores and then that will allow you to run through to the next area. So this area is pretty simple, basically it's just a bit of a jumping puzzle where there's a couple of enemies here and there, you've got a few snipers, three to be precise, and a turret once you open the switch at the end of the room. Uh, there is a fuse uh, that is located on one of the walls uh, which you can shoot and this will open up another area where you can shoot more spores when running through to refresh the buff. If you're feeling brave however, uh, you can try to go for the one phase where basically you don't hit the other room. However, it is quite difficult and uh, even I have had difficulty doing this from time to time. But it is entirely possible. Just be quick. So now you're at the boss area, uh, drop a rally flag and get your super bag and all your ammo and then make your way down. I would suggest using a super straight off the bat just to get his health down but also to fundamentally clear some of the ads if you are using a roaming super. Uh, this will actually help quite a lot as you'll be able to keep yourself safe. And then just move into the back corners of the room where you've got some cover and you can then take care of the screeds and any enemies that are running at you quite quickly and effectively. Really it's just a process of running this three times, um, however do feel free to watch the footage and you can see how I've approached it. When it comes to doing the actual switches, I had a lot of difficulty with this because I kept dying to the fire in the fire room and uh, this caused a lot of issues for me because I wasn't able to survive it. So I ran it on my Titan and I used the Icefall Mantle to give me an overshield and this fixed my issue quite easily and I didn't have the issue. However, it did revolve around a lot of changing equipment and then I switched back to the new exotic chess piece which makes Thunder Crash amazing and it really is quite helpful for taking down the boss quickly. So one more thing, when you drop down to do the boss damage, just make sure that you drop down on one side, get his aggro so that he runs over, and then you can just drop down to the other side, and this will mean that there's a lot more time for you to do the damage that you need to do, but also it will keep you safe.
So that's really all the advice I have to give. So hopefully you found this interesting and also useful. Hopefully it helps you get your solo flawless in a quick amount of time. I have every confidence that you will be able to do it, but just make sure that you take your time and be careful and just remember to kill the right enemies at the right time so that it's a lot safer for you when you do this. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. And if you're feeling especially generous, feel free to share this um, with anyone who you think might want to have the same sort of advice. Hopefully this video will be able to provide further information which other players will find useful and help them also achieve their solo flawless. So thanks for watching the video. Feel free to stick around uh, for the rest of the video uh, just because there will be the end boss encounter which you might find useful just to get the best understanding of how to go through this particular encounter. Um, and yeah, if there are any questions that you have or if you want to know more, then just let me know. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I will see you soon on the next video. Take care.
seen it and others like it. Too many scorn for an active guardian. In place of each world, the darkness stole. At the edge of our heliopause. Callus meant to commune with the darkness. traces of light that thing was a guardian way too late far too late take the rifle it was offered was it not better in your hands than left for another I'll speak to Savala about authorizing exploratory outing if we can recover our lost friend's ghost may learn more of how he died. Return to the city 